If you're on the job market and you're not having a lot of luck, you're not alone. It's really hard to get a job right now. Why is that? Well, in this video, I'm going to break it down. Hey everybody, it's Brian from Life After Layoff. Today I wanna to talk about why is it so hard to get a job? Because I'm seeing a lot of frustration on the job market, specifically on LinkedIn and people who reach out to me on one-on-one coaching sessions, the theme seems to be consistent. I apply and apply and apply, and I just can't seem to get through an interview process, can't seem to get any interest in my profile, more importantly, can't seem to land that job. So in this video, I wanna break down why it's so hard to get a job. But before we get too far into it, if you're interested in more career-related content, just like this directly from a corporate recruiter, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You might also wanna hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future posts. And if you don't wanna hit the subscribe button for me, maybe find another YouTube channel that's smaller, that's just getting started, and you like what they're doing, and give them that sub because that support really means a lot and helps get them off the ground. So as I log into LinkedIn and I scroll for any amount of time, one of the first and major themes that I'm seeing is people being very frustrated with their job search. Layoffs are through the roof as I record this video. We're kind of in the middle of a major layoff season with tech getting hammered. And it's not just little ones, it's massive layoffs with huge influx of employees entering into the job market. But there's a palpable sense of frustration about people trying to get jobs. And people ask me the question all the time, why is it so hard? So I wanna break down from my perspective as a recruiter, what I'm seeing in the job market, what things you should be aware of as a job seeker, and how you can best position yourself to take advantage of a market that might be a little bit more difficult than normal. So let's break down some of those things. First one's very obvious is that if you're in a bad job market, the overall economy is struggling and there are lots of organizations laying off, it's gonna make it much more difficult to get a job because simply put, there's just not a lot of jobs available because as organizations are starting to lean out their workforces, their strategic plans suggest that they need to cut back on the number of open recs. A lot of times companies go through hiring freezes. At the end of the year, usually that's what you see. The winter of 2019, a lot of companies pulled their recs and it was basically crickets in the hiring market. Then all the layoffs hit as a result of the pandemic. And then the rest of 2020, if you were recalling at that point in time, it was a very difficult time to be looking for a job. Here in 2023, as I'm recording this video, it does feel eerily similar to 2020, where there's not a lot of jobs, there's every major corporation is again laying off, and it does feel like there is going to be a very difficult job market for the foreseeable future. And it's a simple law of supply and demand. We have a huge amount of supply and just not a lot of demand right now. Eventually it's gonna change, but for the time being, you're gonna to have to weather the storm and do what it takes to get through the next year, 18 months. I don't know how long it's gonna truly be. But it doesn't help when there are companies out there who have no intention of filling the open recs that they have. In some cases, I have heard hiring managers posting a rec kind of forgetting about it, leaving it out there for a long period of time, and then emphasizing other roles while they just let this one collect dust. Doesn't mean that they're not gonna fill that wreck at some point, but it does start to age, and it just looks like an, a wreck that's sitting out there with no activity, and people will be applying to it, and nothing will be going on. No, a recruiter should see that wreck and say, hey, hiring manager, we need to close this wreck down and focus on the other wrecks that are, we're actually recruiting for. But in some cases, I have seen a hiring manager say, no, we wanna keep it out there. It's not really good TA or talent acquisition, but it does happen. There are also pipelining recs, and these ones I actually have a pretty big issue with because I feel like it's a deception. And especially in a bad job market, it can be very off-putting to a job seeker when you see a company that is posting jobs that they have absolutely no intention of filling. Now, what a pipeline rec is, is a company will post a job that is just designed to collect applications for the future, for pipelining, for building pipelines of candidates so when they do have a rec, they can, in theory, move quicker. I have never actually seen a pipeline rec work well in practice, but in theory, that's why they do it. And they can be sometimes difficult to spot because sometimes companies will post them as if they're an actual job and you can't tell the difference as a job seeker when you're reading a job description, then these companies will collect these resumes and then shut down the role without hiring anybody. So again, as a recruiter, I do have a problem with pipelining recs. I feel like they're deceptive. I don't feel like they're very effective either. And if a job seeker is in a bad job market and they see a company that they admire posting a rec, and they get excited about it, they apply to it with really no intention of ever, it ever being filled. It can be dis, it can be a letdown 
It can get people's hopes up. And I just don't feel like they need that added stress. So let's take a look at a pipelining rack so you can see it in real life. Now, this was a position that was actually posted in Nashville, and this was by a major corporation, a major corporation that you've heard of. But to not name names, I'm just gonna kind of blank it out, but you could probably piece two and two together and figure out who it is if you really wanted to. But essentially what the job posting title was, was open career opportunities. And as I'm sitting there scrolling my feed, I see these, these pop up because I'm located in Tennessee. And I, and I noticed this going open career opportunities. And that was the first thing I thought, I was like, this is a pipelining wreck and this company is actually laid off people. So I'm scrolling through it and it's talking all about generic. There's no specific, like you can see all the locations that are listed out. You can see that there's not really a job. So when you actually scroll through, I'm only going to show you the first part of this wreck because it's, you kind of get the point, but there's not actually anything in this rec that would suggest that it's a real position. And then of course, when you have the open career opportunities, that's an indicator that there's actually not a job that you're applying to. So there's nothing that you can even apply to on this rec that there's no job that you're going to read a job description, prepare for an interview or anything like that. Unfortunately for the 352 applicants who applied to this job, there's almost no chance that any of them are going to get called. So be aware if you're looking for jobs in your local market, you see kind of shady looking job postings like this. And again, the timing of this is pretty bad, especially when you go through a layoff and you see a company posting a pipelining wreck immediately afterward. I just, it's really off putting to me. I made a, a short on that. You can check that out if you my full opinion. But I do want to clarify, I don't think pipelining wrecks are all that common. They're relatively rare. In fact, that's probably the first one I've seen from another company in quite a long time. So don't be thinking that every wreck that you're applying to is a pipelining wreck and that it's deceitful. Nonetheless, they do exist. And it's one of the reasons why it might be harder to get a job. The next reason why it might be difficult to find a job is that the job that was posted may actually be being filled by an internal applicant. And that's probably a little bit more common, especially when companies are reluctant to add additional headcount. They may be moving internally back and forth. And you might say, well, why would a company post the job if they have no intention of ever filling it externally? For some organizations and for some positions, they may have a requirement to do some external recruitment on it. So they'll post the job without any real intention of filling it externally, or maybe an internal comes in at the last minute they weren't expecting goes to the interview process, then you get removed from it because that person cuts in front of you. And that happens, unfortunately, somewhat regularly. The next reason why it's probably harder than it should be to get a job, and this is really in any market, this doesn't mean just because it's a difficult market, is that you have really selective or really quirky hiring managers that are really hung up on a certain thing, a certain industry experience, maybe even a certain company that they want somebody to work for. And I've had managers get really granular with me on this. And we kind of like duke it out in the intake call saying like, do you really need that? It's going to really eliminate, uh, limit your candidate pool. Some hiring managers are just quirky and are insistent on it. And in those cases, there's not a whole lot that you can do. The recruiter's job should be to influence that hiring manager off of that requirement, but that doesn't always happen. And there are some pretty bullheaded hiring managers out there. And the next reason goes hand in hand is that the job description has impossible requirements that such few people actually have. Maybe it's a particularly niche role that has a very select skill set that is just not very common on the open market. Maybe it's a piece of software that there's just not a lot of people that have skill in and there's not going to be a big ramp up or maybe a certification or a certain bar on experience that just not a lot of people have. The next reason it's hard to get a job, and this one goes hand in hand with a difficult labor market, is that there's stiff competition. If you think about it, the number of people who have influxed into the labor market just since January 1, as I record this at the let's see, it's beginning of February, something like 85,000 or 89, it's almost close to 90,000 big tech workers alone got laid off. And unfortunately for the job seeker, applications are certainly up. I remember recently posting a job for a VP level role in tech and got like 700 people in the matter of a little over 24 hours. Uh, I've also seen some recruiter positions because recruiters actually have gotten hit really hard in this downturn. There was a tech job that was posted that was in a reasonable salary range and it sat remote. And I think it was posted 24 hours. They had like 2,300 applicants. So probably every single tech recruiter that got laid off anywhere in the country, certainly in the United States, probably globally, uh, it was applying for this position. If you're the recruiter for that role, trying to manage the 
inbound flow of candidates, you certainly have to do some candidate screening through an ATS. Thing is, no matter how qualified you are, there's always going to be somebody that's a little bit more qualified. And that means you have to have a well-optimized resume that is going to give you the best chance to get noticed for that first round interview. Because when you're sitting around looking at 700 or 2,000 other people applying for the same job, you have to really do everything you possibly can to have a shot at it. And this is talking like these very best jobs on the market, the ones that are highly desirable, they're remote, they have high wage ranges, they're reputable companies. Those jobs are in high demand. So you have to do everything in your power to stand out. If you're struggling with that and you do think you have a good profile, you just don't know how to present yourself, Resume Rocket Fuel is a course that I created that teaches you how to present yourself in the most powerful way that you can based on your background. So it's not going to guarantee that you're going to get a job, but what I can guarantee is that it will teach you how to set yourself up for the maximum chance of success based on your given experience and skill sets. And it's more than just how to write a resume. It's actually training on how to use the resume strategically to your best advantage. And that's where the real value of that course comes in. The final reason that I want to cover in today's video about why it's hard to get a job is actually a little deceptive because it's, there's a lot of jobs on the market. In fact, I just read an article about how the U S economy added over 500,000 jobs in the month of January. But again, those numbers are misleading because a lot of those jobs are undesirable jobs that people don't want. So from that perspective, while it does seem like there could be a lot of jobs, the average job seeker who just got laid off is probably not feeling that way when they look at job postings and they look at their response rates on their resumes. So if you're somebody that's struggling in the job search, this is the question that we're asking in this video is how can I get a job and get back to work as quickly as possible? If you're watching this video, you're taking some of those necessary steps by getting educated and learning how to approach the job market with a degree of confidence and strength. And in addition, the resume is going to get you that first round interview, but it's going to be crucial that you do well in the interview process because there's just not a lot of opportunities there. And that's where the ultimate job seeker bootcamp comes in. It's a, it's a training course that I developed that really takes you through each step of the interviewing process and gives you all the tools and techniques necessary to feel comfortable and interview with strength. In many cases, people have found that the training has paid for itself and the salary increases that they were able to negotiate themselves. But I've been preaching this for a long time. The single best way to get a job in today's job market is to have a recruiter come and find you. It is a lot easier for them to find you and reach out to you to get you into the interview process than it is to apply to a job where there's potentially 2000 other candidates that you're competing against. And we do that through discoverability. Recruiters need to find you. And in order to be found, you have to be where the recruiters are. And that's LinkedIn. And if you're not sure how to do that and build networks that actually produce results, then you need to check out my course, Unlocking LinkedIn, because it does teach you how to be as discoverable as you possibly can to a recruiter and how to access the hidden job market. And you do that through a lot of different things, one of them being building really strong networks. And of course I offer some private one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. If you're really struggling, you want some more personalized and independent help, Feel free to reach out to me through my website for that. All of these links will be found in the bio of this video so you can check them all out. So happy job hunting. I hope this video was at least a little bit insightful. I know it can be a difficult time to be looking for a job, especially when the economy is down, but we can do this. I'm here to help you. Make sure you hit that like button if you found any value in today's video. And like always, thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one.